Unit 10, Regulations and Advice, Module 10.1. Track 36. On my line today, we're talking with Ricky Ventura, a flight attendant with Southern Airlines. Thanks for coming to the studio today, Ricky. You're welcome. How long have you been a flight attendant? About three years now. Could you tell us something about your job? Do you have any useful advice for any of our listeners who are interested in becoming flight attendants? To start with, do you have to be physically fit? Yes, you do. We're on our feet for long periods of time, and it can be very tiring. You also have to have excellent communication skills. That's very important. Do you have to speak a foreign language? For example, Spanish? No, you don't if you work for a domestic airline like I do. But of course, it can help a lot. But I suppose the most important thing you need is good social skills. I can see that. But what about qualifications? Do you have to have a college degree? No, a high school diploma is good enough. But you have to be at least 20. What are the working hours like? Well, that's where the airline industry is very different from other jobs. You have to work shifts, work at weekends, holidays, and so on. So I guess it's difficult if you're married or have kids, but I'm single, so it suits me fine. Do you have to have previous experience to get a job? No, not really. At Southern, you get all the training you need, but of course, any experience of working with people can help. Well, thank you, Ricky. And if you would like any more information, please go to the website where we have all the details of. Module 10.2 Traveling by Plane. Welcome aboard. We're about to show you the safety features of this flight and we need your full attention. Your baggage should be securely stowed in the overhead lockers. If you're in the first class suite, please use the stowage area provided. In economy class, you may use the space under the seat in front of you. During takeoff and landing, laptops have to be switched off and stowed correctly. All mobile phones and tablets have to be set to flight mode. After takeoff, we'll let you know when you can turn on Wi Fi and mobile roaming. In case your phone falls under the seat, you need to ask your cabin crew to help you find it. It's not necessary to move your seat as this may damage the phone and its battery. By now, your TV screen, tray table, and foot rest need to be folded away. You have to make sure your window blinds are up and your seats are in the upright position. Whenever the seatbelt sign is on, you must sit with your seatbelt fastened. You have to wear it low and tight across your lap and adjust it by pulling the strap. You need to lift the metal flap to unfasten. We recommend wearing your seatbelt at all times throughout the flight and securing it over your blanket when sleeping, so if needed, we won't have to disturb you. It is not allowed to smoke on board, including using or charging electronic smoking devices. All toilets have smoke detectors. In the unlikely event of an emergency landing, you have to brace yourselves against the seat in front of you. Or if it is not possible, you can brace by leaning as far forward as you can, with your arms tucked under your legs. If necessary, oxygen masks will appear from above you. Pulling the mask towards you starts the flow of oxygen. You have to place the mask over your face and breathe normally. You need to put your mask on first and then help others. You have to take a moment to locate the emergency exit nearest to your seat, which may be behind you. Lights at floor level will direct you to the nearest exit. You have to remove high heeled shoes and leave all baggage behind when evacuating. Even if you are a frequent flyer, it's a good idea to read the safety card in your seat pocket. It will remind you of the safety aspects of this aircraft and also shows the location of the life jacket under or to the side of your seat. When told by your cabin crew, you need to remove it from the container and pull it over your head. You have to bring the tape around your waist and fasten in front, pulling firmly to secure. You need not inflate your life jacket unless you're leaving the aircraft. 
Otherwise, you have to pull the two red toggles sharply downwards. You can also inflate the life jacket by blowing into the mouthpiece and use the whistle to attract attention. Your cabin crew will now pass through the cabin to carry out the final safety check. Thank you, and enjoy your flight. Module 10.4 Track 37 Are you looking forward to the trip, Craig? Yes and no. To be honest, I don't really like flying, and this will be my first long-haul flight. But you travel a lot, Melissa. Do you have any tips? Well, there are some things you can do before you go. It's a good idea not to eat any rich or fatty foods the day before you go. And don't drink any alcohol the day before, either. And what about on the flight? Again, it's best to avoid alcohol on the flight. But make sure you get plenty of water. I find it's best to take a big bottle of water with me. But they give you water, don't they? Yes, but the little cups are so small, and it's annoying to have to call the flight attendant all the time. And it's okay to take water onto the plane? Yes, though you need to buy it in the departure lounge after you go through security. What about food? Don't eat too much, but that's not difficult. So, is it best to be quiet, stay still, and try to get some sleep? No, not at all. You should get up and move about during the flight. Walk around a little and do some stretching exercises. Right. And what about jet lag? Any advice on that? Well, it will be a problem, mainly because the time difference will be something like 12 hours. But you should try to adjust to the new time zone as quickly as possible. But I'm only there for a couple of days. By the time I get used to the new time, I will have to come back and change it all again. Don't try and keep to your own time zone. Okay. I guess I'll be pretty tired when I arrive. Probably. So it's not a good idea to get straight down to business. Give yourself time to get to the hotel, take a shower, relax a little first if you can. That's a good idea. And what about... Module 10.6 Culture File Cultural Misunderstandings Brazil Sophie Harper is a British businesswoman. She is having lunch with Felipe Marquez, manager of a company in Brazil to make a deal. While they are eating, she takes some documents out of her briefcase and gives them to Mr. Marquez. She then starts explaining the contents in detail. Mr. Marquez doesn't seem very interested. Saudi Arabia. Mark West works for a Canadian business magazine. He is in Saudi Arabia to do some research, and is invited to the home of a Saudi businessman for dinner. The house is beautifully furnished, and before dinner, Mark walks around the living room admiring the furniture, carpets, and ornaments. Indonesia Ruth Klein works for an Australian travel company and wants to make an agreement with an Indonesian hotel chain. She has a meeting with a senior manager of the Gulf Hotel. She's going to wear her favorite outfit a bright red pants suit. Germany. Marty Pinkerman is an American businessman. He works for a pharmaceuticals company. He is in Frankfurt and meets Hans Schmidt, a senior manager of Dr. Pharmaceuticals, for the first time. After the introductions, Marty begins calling the manager, Hans.